Let's take a few moments to look at der words. Now, der words in German are simply dies and weg. Uh, they're called der words because their pattern of declination is based on that of definite articles. So I'm going to briefly review definite articles in this presentation before moving over to a discussion of, def of a discussion of der words and how they are, and finally how they are used in a German sentence. If you think you need m more review on definite articles, take a look at the presentation "Definite Articles in the Nominative and Accusative Cases." So, let's take a look at definite articles. You'll recall that in German, the definite articles are der, die, das, and die in the nominative case. In the accusative case, there they are the definite articles are den, die, das, die. So uh, the, we can choose the appropriate definite article based on our knowledge of whether the noun that the definite article modifies is masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural, and whether this noun is in a nominative or accusative environment. Now this pattern of definite article declination um, can sort of be summarized by what I called a Oklahoma box. Everything inside the Oklahoma box stays the same. A feminine article in the nominative case that's modified by the definite article D, well in the accusative case this definite, definite article stays the same. D remains D. The only thing that we really have to look out for is the masculine noun. Uh, the definite article that modifies a masculine noun in the nominative case, der, changes to den in, a, in an accusative environment. This same pattern, this Oklahoma box, we'll find this same pattern when we take a closer look at der words in a few seconds. So, but what, what's a der word? So, a der word, dies, is simply means this in in German. Now you notice that I don't have a, a, an ending on there. I have I have dies with a apostrophe. I'm not an apostrophe, a uh, dash. Uh, that's because I need to know a little bit more about the noun that this dare word modifies. Is it a masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural noun? Is it in the nominative or accusative case? So once I get more information, I'll be able to tack on the appropriate ending. So what are the endings? Um, they're an awful lot like the endings we've already seen in our discussion of definite articles. Uh, and again, the Oklahoma box is a pattern that we could apply to this uh, the pattern of pattern of declination for dare words. Now, uh, based on whether the noun that the dare word modifies, if this noun is masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural, or if this noun is located in a nominative or accusative environment, I could tack on the appropriate ending. Now, welch is the other dare word. Welch simply means which. Now, you notice also here that I don't have a I have the, the root, the stem of the dare word, vej, but I don't have an ending. That's because I need to know more about the noun that this dare word modifies. Now we'll also see that vej is an interrogative, which, it asks a question. And you'll also recall that from prior discussions that every time we ask a question in German, um, we may have to change the order of the of the wor of word order to syntax in the German sentence, and this is something that we'll see again when we use vej. Now, again, the same pattern applies. The same Oklahoma pattern, based on the fact, and this applies for dies as well. Based on the fact, or based on whether the noun that Vej modifies if it's masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural, and whether this noun is nominative or accusative in a nominative or accusative environment, I will apply the endings you see on your screen to the root. So let's take a closer look 
at using dies and welch in a German sentence. Let's start off with welch first, since I'm asking a question and I could respond with dies. Um, welche Lampe ist schön? Which lamp is beautiful? Now, let's take a look at that sentence. I know that Lampe is feminine. Now I also know, so Lampe is feminine, I know that its definite article is D, D Lampe. Now I also know by looking at the sentence that ist is a verb that doesn't transfer any action. I mean the lamp isn't doing anything to something or someone. It's simply existing. It's being schön. It's being beautiful. Therefore, since I'm talking about a condition of the lamp, its, it's existence, the, and the verb ist implies that I will be dealing primarily with the nominative case. So, which lamp is beautiful? I have to use the welche for the feminine nominative. Welche Lampe ist schön? Now, it's a question that comes at the beginning of the sentence. I could respond by saying, diese Lampe ist schön. This lamp is beautiful. But again, I'm still within, I'm still inside the Oklahoma box. Uh, I'm dealing with a feminine noun and I'm still in the nominative case. If I change this noun and bring it into an, an accusative environment, I introduce another actor in the sentence, er. He's the one who's in the nominative noun because he's performing the action. Which action is it? It's haben. Er hat. He has. Well, what does he have? He has the lamp. Or actually, I'm asking, which lamp does he have? Welche Lampe hat er? So, even though it looks the same, welche looks the same, it's actually now in an accusative environment. It receives the action of being had. I want to know which lamp he has. And I can simply respond to this question by saying, er hat diese Lampe. Now you'll notice that the word order switched a bit. Welche was at the beginning of the last sentence, and now uh, diese Lampe is at the end of the sentence, and er is at the beginning. Why did I do that? Well, that's because, as you recalled before, welche is an interrogative and requires it's required to place an interrogative at the beginning of the sentence. Now that I'm not, I'm not asking the question, I'm making a statement now, I could put the primary actor in the sentence, er, at the beginning of the sentence, in the first position. Er hat diese Lampe. He has this lamp. Uh, but again, I'm still within the Oklahoma box. I, I'm dealing with feminine noun. Uh, it's in the accusative case. Therefore, the form of, of diese, I simply add an E ending on, and that E ending looks an awful lot like the nominative case. Let's sort of mix it up a bit and deal with a masculine noun. Welcher Tisch ist schön? Okay, so again, same pattern applies. Um, I'm talking about the tisch, about the table, I'm talking about some characteristic of the table, its existence, its being, therefore it's going to be in the, there is no primary, there is an actor in the sentence, but this actor isn't doing anything, there's no action being performed, it's simply being, therefore it's going to be in the nominative case. Welcher Tisch ist schön? I could respond to this by saying, dieser Tisch ist schön. Now, this is, in both instances, both instances, this is the uh, this is the nominative case. If I introduce another actor into the sentence er, that's going to um, make it a little more complicated. Now this er, this primary actor, he, he has something. Well what does he have? He has the table. Which table does he have? And this, well, this table receives the action of being had, therefore this table is going to be in the accusative case. And that is indicated by the ending on welch. It's no longer an ER ending. It's not welcher, but it goes to welchen. 
accused of case. So which table has he? Which table does he have? I could respond to this question by saying, er hat diesen Tisch. He has this table. Again, I've switched the word order in the sentence around because I'm no longer dealing with a question. Um, I have a primary, I have an actor in the sentence. I could put him in the first position and then move the direct object, the, the, the thing that receives the action, in the accusative case, I could put that towards the end of the sentence. Um, so, to summarize, what we need to know with dare words is that they essentially they are the same thing, have the same pattern as definite articles. I need to know whether the definite article, or I need to know whether the noun that the dare word modifies, I need to know whether it's masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural. I also need to know whether that noun is going to be in a nominative environment or an accusative environment. I, I really need to focus on whether, uh, what type of verb, what type of action is being performed. Are we simply talking about being? Some quality of the noun? Is there, a, is there some form of sign in the sentence? If it is, most likely I'm going to be in the nominative case. If there's a, two actors and if there's two nouns in a sentence and one is performing an action and the other noun in a sentence receives this action, well, that's a clear cut case for having an accusative object. Um, and now, based on that knowledge, whether it's uh, masculine, feminine, neuter, or plural, or whether it's nominative or accusative, I need to tack on the appropriate endings to the dare word.